Hello everyone. Today we will discuss few Kafka concepts which can be asked in a technical interview. Kafka is very crucial for interviews because it's a popular real-time data streaming platform with very high scalability, fault tolerance and seamless integration with other tools. Understanding Kafka's architecture and where to use it will enhance your value as a candidate in the interview. So without any further delay, let's start. First question is what is Apache Kafka? Kafka is a message broker which is open source and based on publish and subscribe mechanism. First important term here is that you need to explain is message broker. A message broker is an intermediate component which helps other applications communicate with each other in the form of messages. Then we have publish and subscribe or pub sub model. It is a messaging pattern where publishers who are the sender of the message interact with the receivers who are also called subscribers but not directly publishers will publish the message in kafka topic and what all subscribers who have subscribed to that particular topic will be able to consume that particular message in this publisher and subscribers do not interact directly with each other the next follow up questions could be what is a kafka topic So in Kafka the messages are coming as a stream of data a topic is a logical name for that stream of data in which messages are being published suppose you have an e-commerce application and you want to group together the messages related to order status so you can create a topic with the name such as order status topic and the service which is responsible for updating the status of the orders will act as a producer to that particular topic and produces a message every time there is a change in status of any order and the other services which are waiting for the status updates to perform their own actions for example a dispatch service so it will wait for uh, the status to be updated as confirmed so that it can dispatch the order it will become the consumer or subscriber of that particular topic so that when producer add a message then consumer should be able to consume it and act accordingly a topic can have multiple partitions which are stored across the kafka cluster now as soon as you mention these terms such as partition or kafka cluster it becomes highly probable that the interviewer might start asking about these terms as the follow up questions so make sure what you want to answer in the current question so that you should be ready for the follow up question based on the current answer next question is what is a broker in kafka a broker is a single instance of kafka server that stores and manages one or more kafka partitions a kafka broker manages all the transactions between producers and consumers broker handles all the requests coming from producer to write the message on the partitions and all the requests from consumer to read those particular messages collection of multiple kafka broker nodes working together is known as a kafka cluster next question is what are partitions in kafka broker A single topic can consist of multiple internal queues which are known as partitions which holds the record published to the kafka or the messages which are being added in the kafka are stored in those partitions as we know that the topics are stored as log files on the disk and we can only have disk of a finite size only that means we can hold a limited number of messages that can act as a bottleneck if we talk about scaling So to be able to scale out Kafka gives us the option to break a single topic into multiple partitions which can reside on multiple nodes in the distributed form Partitions are the backbone of Kafka to be distributed each partition within a topic maintains its own order of the messages producers pushes record to any partition within a topic when submitting a record a partition is chosen either determined by its key or explicitly specifying to which partition the producer wants to push the message when consumer subscribe to a topic they are assigned some partitions that they receive records from next question is what is the use of consumer group a consumer group is a set of consumers which cooperate to consume data from some topics the partitions of all the topics are divided amongst the consumer in the group 
As new group members arrive or old member leaves, the partitions are reassigned so that each member receives a proportional share of partitions. Next question is, what benefits you can expect using Kafka? There are some advantages of Kafka which makes it significant to use. First is high throughput. We do not need any large hardware in Kafka because it is capable of handling high velocity and high volume of data. Then we have low latency. Kafka can easily handle these messages, a large number of messages with a very low latency in the range of milliseconds. The other advantages include fault tolerance, data durability, and last but not the least, scalability. Please do let me know if you want these topics to be covered in detail. Next question is, what is the concept of leader and follower in Kafka? In Kafka, each partition has one server that acts as a leader and one or more other servers that operate as a follower. The leader is in charge of all the read and write requests for that particular partition, while the followers are responsible for passively replicating the leader. So whatever changes leader is doing, the followers will replicate. In case the leader node fails, then one of the followers will become leader and it starts handling all the read and write requests for that particular partition. The next question is, how Apache Kafka is different from RabbitMQ? This is also a very famous question. So the Kafka and RabbitMQ are messaging queue systems that you can use in stream processing. First difference is how producer and consumers interact with each other. Producer and consumer interact differently in RabbitMQ and Kafka. In RabbitMQ, the producer sends and monitors if the message reaches the intended consumer or not. On the other hand, Kafka producer publishes the message to topic regardless of whether consumers have consumed them or not. Another difference is setting message priority. RabbitMQ brokers allow producer to escalate certain messages by using priority queue. So instead of sending messages in the first in first out order, the broker processes high priority messages ahead of the normal messages. For example, a retail application might queue sales transactions every hour. However, if the system administrator issues a priority backup message, then the broker sends it immediately. Unlike RabbitMQ, Apache Kafka does not support priority queues. It treats all the messages as equal when distributing them to the respective partitions. Another difference is replaying the message or event. In RabbitMQ, once the message is read, the consumer sends the acknowledgement reply back to the broker, which then deletes the message from queue. Unlike RabbitMQ, Apache Kafka appends the message to a log file and that log file will remain until its retention period expires. That way consumers can reprocess the stream data at any time within the stipulated period. The next question is when to use Kafka and when to use RabbitMQ. It is important to understand that RabbitMQ and Kafka are not competing message brokers. Both were designed to support data exchange in different use cases, where one can be more suitable than the other one. So the Kafka is suitable for applications that need to reanalyze the received data. You can process the streaming data multiple times within a retention period. Performing this with RabbitMQ is more challenging as messages are deleted once consumed. Next is real-time processing. Kafka stream messages are very low latency and is suitable for analyzing streaming data in real time. For example, you can use Kafka as a distributed monitoring service to raise alerts for online transaction processing in real time. And if we talk about RabbitMQ, there are use cases for RabbitMQ as well. First one is effective message delivery. So RabbitMQ knows whether the client application consumed the message or not. It suits application that must adhere to specific sequence and delivery guarantees when exchanging the data. RabbitMQ brokers allow producer to escalate a certain message by using the priority queue as well. So instead of sending the message in first in first out order, the broker processes the higher priority messages ahead of the normal messages. Managing this type of priority messages is not available in case of Kafka, it can only be done in RabbitMQ. The next question is, can you tell some real world usage of Apache Kafka? Suppose you have multiple microservices and you want to have an 
asynchronous or non blocking communication between them using event driven design pattern so in that case kafka can be used we can use kafka as a message broker due to its high throughput value it is capable of managing huge amounts of data it can be used as a published subscriber messaging system that allows data to be read and published in a convenient manner next is to monitor operational data it can be used to keep track of metrics related to certain technologies such as security logs next is data logging kafka may also be used to collect the data from a variety of logs and make it available to the consumers next use case could be stream processing with kafka kafka may be used to handle streaming data that is read from one topic then processed and then written to another topic so the users and applications will have access to the new topic that contains the processed data i hope you find this video useful i'll try to come up with next set of questions as well for kafka i want to thank all of you for supporting me till now if you like this video don't forget to give us a like and share it with your friends who are preparing for the interviews thank you so much for watching keep learning